Start it up. All right, y'all, welcome back to another video. Today we are gonna show you guys, or I'm gonna show you guys, a little trick I like to do when I build my arrows to make them just slightly more accurate. But before we get into that, for the last like four years or whatever, we've been doing a whole bunch, we've been filming and doing all these kind of videos or whatever. So we decided to make an investment and upgrade camera. So if you guys are seeing this, it's a lot more, it's probably a lot different than our old one. But yeah, we used to film on this thing here. This is a Canon SL2, which is a great starter camera, which we'll probably still use it, but we upgraded to the Sony uh, A7 Mark III. Mark III or something like that. Hoping that we'll come out with like a little bit better quality videos, cooler videos, I guess. So. We made an investment in that, but today I'm gonna do a Lancaster unboxing and ultra view. So I got a couple things that I gotta open up here and uh, get ready for deer season. We got a ton of things going on. If you guys stay tuned, uh, our next video is uh, we're gonna go try out some new toys here. Spot hog side tapes I needed. I got some upgrades to the site. So the first thing I got was from SNS Archery because I could not find this thing anywhere. It's just a little double pin pointer which I need for this site here because this one that I got is a single pin with a single pointer. And then we got this. This comes with ultra rear release to try it out if you want to. And I got a sight rod. So we're gonna throw these on the site real quick and then we're gonna go get into building the arrows. Now to the arrows. Alright, now for the arrows. So this year, so Austin had bought these four millimeter arrows and he said he's been loving them. So I thought I'd give it a try. And you guys watch our old any of our old videos, you guys all probably know that I've shot these. These are probably the only arrows that brand of arrows and type of arrows I've shot. This is Easton Axis arrows, five millimeters. Yeah, um, these ones in particular are match grade. Uh, I don't believe these ones are match grade. I don't remember. I ordered a while ago, but I decided I'm gonna try some four millimeters for hunting and just shooting general because I like to shoot a little bit further ranges. Okie dokie. So, gonna open these up, and these are the arrows. Much, much thinner. Before I set these up and go try them out someday, here soon when I go to site it, recite it in. So we're gonna build these and then I'm gonna show you guys, like I said, a little trick that I like to do to make, I, I feel like, I don't know, it might be a placebo, who knows. And I will tell you guys right now, this is, this was not, this is not my idea. Um, uh, I originally saw it, who was it? It was Josh Bomar. He did a really long video. I'll link it down below. He did a really long video. It's like an hour long of him how he builds his arrows and it's like really in depth and you can learn a lot from it. So that's where I got this idea from. I've been doing it for the last two years and I feel like my grouping and accuracy by building the arrows this way has helped a whole bunch. So if you get these out inserts, you'll have about an inch extra, so you have to part cut your arrows an inch shorter, most likely. But first thing I like to do, I always like to spend them. You just never know. Uh, bigger name brands like you know Carbon Express, Easton. Uh, there's probably a handful of other ones that I can't think of top of my head right now. But any really like big name brands are fairly good about having making their arrows like super straight. But I just like to always check just to make sure because there's always that one arrow that just kind of flies weird. And this can almost eliminate that. So, right here, and I'll grab every single arrow, center up here. I'll spin it. Just to make sure that there's no wobble. So this one's fairly straight. So, what I'll do is probably just set it on this side. Anything that's not straight, I'll set it on that side. So I'll go, th I'll go run through and spin all these and then I'll get back to y'all. So, uh, I've done maybe seven, eight, 
arrows and so this is the first one that has a wobble so if you look at this end right here now if this now if the wobble was on the knock end you'll just pull this knock out on this on the one side and then put it on this side but this, in this case this is fine so you so you always want to cut off the side that has the wobble so like say this side wo like wobbled then we'll just take this off put it on this side and cut off the part that wobbles as you see did my duty got the line right there because i like i like to have it to where my arrow basically like almost butts up really close to my uh, rest so like, you look at these arrows I've got them fairly close Let's see oh yeah I feel like I cut it right at the perfect point but if gonna, we might need to back it up a little bit maybe part about right there So this is a T-Bird archery uh, arrow saw. I've had this for maybe five years now. It's great and this cutting wheel is replaceable and all it is is just a cutting wheel. So you can go to any like parts store and buy one. But I've used this to uh, cut my uh, aluminum arrows, uh, obviously carbon fiber. So I have, I have yet to replace the, the cutting wheel. Is this thing connected? Okie dokie. So, what you always want to do too is you always want to cut them one at a time. So don't don't cut the one and do all of them. You always want to almost fully build an arrow all the way until you. So that way, because you don't want to cut all your arrows and all that, and you know just wasted all this money because you got like one measurement wrong. So like it's okay, I'm okay if I mess up one arrow. I haven't in a while. Probably will that now that I said that. cut tap it out throw it in here deburr it this thing comes with a little deburring tool right here got the sandpaper put it right there like so kind of put it right there and like i'm not doing much just just stuff because you want it to be square so you can kind of want to do something flat so it's like really better like this i'll put it here and i'll just Just a little bit. So now that, that end there is completely flat and clean. Make sure it's all good and this is one bad. Maybe now we just gotta move it in there out a little more. Like this. That was perfect. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Right, so we have all dozens cut to length I've got them all clean inside squared they do make squaring tools I just never bought one because I've always had done just fine using a piece of sandpaper twirling it on there a little bit and I've always been able to get my inserts flush and my broad heads and whatnot flush with the arrow so I mean you can spend the money you want to I just use a piece of sandpaper but so now this is where the I guess that trick I was talking you got about to make more arrows. So I think I'm gonna actually go with these. What do you think about them tasting? You like them? They are right. They are right. right. They're smooth. So they're going to be kind of like this, but three fletch. Yeah, fuck with that. So, um, but yeah, I've been using AAE for the last two years, so AAE, AAE makes some pretty good stuff. So now, Here's what we do. So now you want to grab yourself a scale. This is a arrow scale. You can, if you guys, you know, sell weed paraphernalia, you can. Uh, <laughs> you probably had got one of these. But all I'm gonna do is turn it on. Try to explain this the best I could possibly can without it being too confusing for people. But it kind of gets confusing. But it's pretty straightforward. So what I like to do is make three categories. So there's, so I'm gonna have light, 
perfect and a little bit heavy on the heavier side. And you want to make those groups for your fill points, or not for your fill points, your inserts, your fletchings, and your arrows. And you'll see it while I do at that. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right. So this is 194.4. So I'll throw this one right here in the middle, just because that's the first one we did. Measure this one. Tear, set it on there. Make sure it's even, not touching anything on both sides. So this one's red 198. So I'm gonna throw this one right here. And he was like, so some people might think that this is like, uh, just kind of doing too much, but I feel like it's helped me. And then like once you like, you gotta think if you're if you like to shoot 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 100 plus or whatever, then like once you're like out that far, like any minor little things, so like you're like you know, the difference between four gra grains from you know that distance, you know it could be a huge like you either hit spot on or four inches low or four inches high. So this is one of those things and I like I personally I don't shoot deer at that far but I like to shoot that far just for practice so that's 197 so we throw it on here and you just run through all the arrows the exact same thing just run through all of them so now we're gonna do the inserts so same concept so in this case we don't have a light we just have 194 grains and so on and so forth so these should be all be 50 grains so we know that how much we know how much this should weigh so Basically, I think I'm just gonna do it like this. This one's 47, so that's a little bit lighter. So I'll throw that over here, make a pile right there, clear it. It's also 47, so I'll throw it there. And we'll just go down and do the same thing over again. So after you're done weighing all your arrows and you do differentiate, so these two are just slightly lighter than these ones, and you wanna do the same thing with your fill points and, oh, your fill points, your inserts and your fletching. So the inserts surprisingly are all perfect they're all the same weight one's maybe four or six grains i'm not gonna be too worried about it and then you do the same thing with your fletchings right here so we have our light about where all of them are and then your more heavier ones and then you want to do a mock build so what i'm gonna do is clear it and throw on the fletchings like this and then I'm gonna throw on the arrow. God damn jerks, name my fault, big dog. Like that, throw on that. So this arrow is gonna come out to be 267 grains without the fill point, obviously, but or, and stuff like that. But that's how the arrow edge sits. So we're gonna set this one off the side. So you're almost doing like a mock build. And that's 267, so we're about a grain off. And so basically, at the end of it, if you guys are kind of picking up what I'm putting down, so basically, these are all basically one or two grains from each other. All right, that's gonna do for us tonight. It's pretty late, but we got five rows done. So this is how they turned out. It looked pretty, uh, pretty sick. Excited to shoot them. We're not gonna shoot them in this video. But, so we got the arrows made. So these are arrows that we run this season with the fletchings. Um, I gotta go buy more, but we're gonna go shoot this. So stay tuned for next video because we're gonna find out or test out some new toys that we got. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna get tasting up in a tree before uh, deer season so that he gets used to it. And uh, yeah, we got a handful of stuff coming up. We still got a ton of things to do before the season opens. So should be a lot of stuff coming out here soon. So we're gonna keep grinding, keep going, uh, keep shooting, keep practicing, and hopefully we have a our best season yet so uh yeah thanks you guys for watching if you guys like please comment subscribe and we'll see you guys maybe never who knows